Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Not A Sheep Podcast. My name is Narwhal, and I'm here with Matt. Yup. Uh, Matt, what have you been listening to the last couple weeks? So, uh, over the last like couple weeks, I decided, or one day I was just on YouTube, and I was like, you know what? I haven't seen a lot of these Kenny Beats, like the cave episodes. I've only seen a few. What is what is that? It's like his series familiar. he does where he'll like bring in an artist, uh, make a beat, and they're like filming the whole thing. Uh, he'll quickly make a beat. It's usually like kind of a more dumb type of song. And then they'll like go in the studio and freestyle. And it's like, they're all like less than like seven minutes, but like it's a pretty cool series. So I just went back and watched every single episode. Didn't take that long. Um, Is it like a vlog style thing or is it like a high production, like TV show type of thing? In the middle. It's not like super high production, but it's, it's pretty well done. It's like, he has like a production company, like DOTS, which is like don't overthink shit. But, um, so they, uh, I think they also did the short film for the album with Denzel Curry. I don't know oh, if you saw okay. that. Yeah, yeah. But anyways, so I, I went through all those, and then I started to check out some of his like songs that he has credits on, and I started to get into. Do you know the artist Dominic Fike? I've heard the name. I've never listened to him though. Yeah. So he's got the song "Phone Numbers." I don't know if you've heard that, but it's like one of it's. I think it's Kenny Beats' like biggest song that has okay. his name on it. Yeah. Like featuring him or whatever, but um. And so I, through that, I checked out his new album that came out earlier this year. And it's like, I think it's alternative. Um, but I've just like been listening to that on like okay. repeat. What's his name? Dominic Fike? Dominic Fike, like F-I-K-E. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, no, I, I've always heard the name. I should definitely check it out. Would you say Kenny Beats is a top tier producer in the hip hop scene at this point? I think so. I mean... So I don't know. There's kind of a couple ways you can look at it because his name is so big now. He's like one of the names people actually know, yeah. even if they're not super into music. Um, but I think that's like the coolest thing is like how Twitch has changed the game. Yeah. Like him, Illmind, uh, even like he's not a producer, but Alex Tume, who's like an engineer, yeah. is like kind of making a big name for himself through, through like Twitch. he's been doing yeah stuff with Kenny Beats too. Oh. And like... I think it's kind of cool that there's like engineers now that are yeah. known for engineering. <laughs> if, if you're an engineer, can an engineer like, are they competent enough to make a beat if they want to? Uh, or are they, are they usually kind of like specialists where it depends? They I mean, just engineer. I think a lot of people get into music. Like a lot of producers always talk about like, there'll be these memes be like every producer at one point was a rapper that made beats and then they just became a producer because <laughs> they couldn't rap. Yeah, yeah. And so I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of engineers were like, I don't know. I feel like no one really goes into music. Like I'm going to be an engineer. Like that's yeah. not that that's bad, but like, it's usually like, I want to do music. Okay. I got to learn how to mix. Yeah. Oh, I'm better at this. Like I'm yeah. going to go this route. But I bet the people, there probably are a few who like just love like mixing or like engineering or whatever right, yeah or whatever their specialty is and they've like never rapped or anything and mm-hmm. they're probably like savages yeah if that's like all they care about well there's like a couple big names in like hip-hop for like engineers but like the one that most people know is like mixed by ali who's like top dogs engineer but besides that like i don't know can you name any engineers like no I, yeah i, know, I can I name know the ali, ones i've but... like specifically looked up but like I, it's not like most people don't know who engineers are yeah yeah that's but true. Yeah. Um, cool. Well, yeah. So Dominic Fike, I'll check it out. I've always heard the name. Uh, I've been listening to Big Sean's album, which we will talk about because it's such a big thing right now. Yeah. I mean, Big Sean is one of the biggest names in the hip hop scene. And like, we, we want to dive into it and kind of take our time talking about it more in depth. And I just don't think we're ready to do that yet. I may or may not have not gotten around to listen to it yet but <laughs> <laughs> hey man you've been busy i love you... big sean though I w- i'm definitely going to listen to it yeah. yeah you've actually said that you think his last album was one of the most yeah like, underrated i decided not the the one with metro was kind of cool but like uh i think i decided is like a top five top 10 like rap album of the last 10 years yeah like, i don't know if that's pretty broad but like i i think it's really really good yeah i think it's really good yeah and i have to say that this album is D- it's detroit too mm-hmm. uh probably my favorite album of the year really okay yeah um and i mean it's been a weird year for music because i feel like there's been a lot more music than usual maybe right. that's just the vibe maybe that's not accurate at all mm-hmm. but i've just felt like there was a whole lot of like quarantine music that got dropped mm-hmm. and i really really like big sean's album um but i've also been listening to i went to the so Dreamville dropped the um, Revenge of the Dreamers or what was 
is it the second one the deluxe version or the director's cut or whatever they call yeah, it yeah but i mean just the second half like of yeah but i mean what was the original album it's called revenge of the oh dreamers. revenge of the dreamers but it was one it, or oh two? was this the first one or was there one like a couple years ago well they the one they did in 2019 it was the third one so they've okay, done so, two before that okay yeah so revenge of the dreamers three but it's like the director's oh, cut. okay yeah so the second half the second half right. basically i would feel bummed if i was an artist and i went to this if you guys aren't familiar basically dreamville hosts this thing where i mean j cole kind of hosts it right yeah he's in charge of it yeah and they get this like house mm-hmm. correct me if i'm wrong but they get a house and then they invite a bunch of artists who are a part of dreamville are there people there that aren't a part of dreamville as well i'm well for the last one, there was a bunch and yeah, like, that yeah. weren't, but normally it's just been dream build. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So they do like a whole documentary, which is really cool on YouTube. You guys should go watch it. If you just like to see behind the scenes, it's super cool, but they get this house and for like a week or how long were they there I for? I think like 10 days. Okay. Yeah. So like 10 days, they just invite a ton of talented artists that are on the come up or already famous. And they just make a whole album in 10 days, like mm-hmm. start to finish and uh, so there's like the main album, but then they'd release like a deluxe version, I guess, for the right. songs that didn't make the cut. Mm-hmm. And I really like a lot of them. Yeah, I do too. Like, I mean, I think there was like, well, I remember when it, they dropped the second half, I was like, oh, there's like three new songs with Jid. Like, I'm definitely going to, I'm sure I'll like those. And yeah. I, so Big Black Truck, I think that one's dope. The second one with, uh, who's on it? I think Earth Gang and it's Still Up, that one. Oh, yeah. Still Up is j- isn't that one of just that's one of the Earth Gang singles though, right? It is. I Maybe. think still up. I don't know. I I don't know if but it's it's, part it's got of the... Reason on it too. I don't know. I I like hearing oh, Reason. Oh, with... sorry. I was thinking Earth Gang has a song they just oh, released called Powered Up. Powered Up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm thinking of Still up, Still Up, which is Earth Gang is on it. I'm pretty sure. But then it's Reason from Top Dog. Okay. Cool. And I think Boss. I don't know. Anyways, yeah. I I don't know. But um, yeah. So I've been listening to that, and then also, uh, still woozy. I think you guys should check it out. I think it's like t- indie pop is, I guess, maybe the category. Um, but still Woozy's to this. He's just this American singer and producer and stuff. And he's been around for a while. And uh, it's one of those where like if you at, you're at the end of your playlist, if it's the right vibe of song, sometimes he pops up still Woozy. And I've I've never known anything about him i just have always recognized the name right but this is the first time i've ever actually added like a still woozy song to my playlist and it's called uh it's called bs and it's really really good so i don't know check it out still woozy's been around for a while and is now like actually popular so i'm excited but uh yeah so moving on here Mm. is futuristic retiring (laughs) i don't think so i mean i I draw so many, we were talking about this, but like parallels between like him and Logic. Um, He put out that post that you were referring to. Yeah, do you want to explain it for people who don't really know Do you remember what it said? It was like, basically he was talking about his album he's about to drop, which I think is the Friday after this episode comes out. And um, basically said that like, once this is out, like I'm going to take a step back and focus on like building artists and then some like business stuff he's working on that's at least how i read it but um yeah i don't know because i in like a when he dropped his previous album still on the rise he did a little documentary and in it he was talking about my goals for the next like two years are to put out two albums each year something like that and then he he like named them they were like still on the rise was the first one futuristic and then he wants to do coast to coast two which he recently said he probably won't be doing okay um and then was there another one and then uh he had an album a couple of years ago it was called i think it was called songs about girls and he wants to do songs about girls too oh but i don't know it seems like his like mission or whatever might have changed a little bit yeah well he seems like kind of burnt out i I just a little i'm not like releasing that much music like that's a tall task to try and say i'm gonna release two albums a year Mm -hmm. that's tough to do and he's been for as long as i've been a fan of him he's been pretty consistent and he's also like i don't know what his role is but i think he's the head of dropout records which is like his label he started plus like 
I don't know all the all the content he's doing. I think he's also he's got a business, uh, Guestless, which is like a store. A what? He I think he he partially owns a business. It's called Guestless. It's like what a store. What do they do? It's just a store in the mall of like Arizona. But like but like what's in the store? Like what? Type oh, of I, store? I mean I think there's like a lot of his clothes are in there. It's like oh, a, it's like yeah. a apparel apparel. Store. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I was like, what type of store? <laughs> it's are we a grocery talking? store. <laughs> I'm like what? Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, and he also has. A print shop, which he's yeah, been, he's now he has that. a print shop. He has apparently he has a store. He has his music. He has Dropout Records, which seems like they and then they also have all those playlists. Yeah, he which is I think under Dropout. Yeah, but, yeah, but that's, still, that's like a ton of different avenues of right. And then he also posts a lot on his like other account, which is like Zachary Lewis's like real name. I'm pretty sure, and it's like motivational stuff. So I think. I don't know. I think he's kind of been exploring different avenues over the past few years, and I can't speak for what he's doing, but it seems like he's might be taking a step back as an artist. Yeah, and I mean, I can get that, as, especially for me being someone who I like doing so many different things. Mm-hmm. I don't have like one set passion that I'm like, this is all I'm doing for the rest of my life. Yeah, and some artists are that way, where it's like, this is all I want to do, and I don't care about anything else, but it's been apparent to me that he clearly enjoys other things. And right. He, he has like a, he actually has a personality. And what I mean by that is it seems like a lot of artists are kind of mysterious outside mm-hmm. of their music videos or like, you know, you don't see them on Twitter. You don't see them on Instagram. They're not very vocal, but futuristic has always been like, you kind of get to know him more yeah. than other artists. Mm-hmm. And so I don't know. I mean, it, it makes sense to me. Do you think that maybe he makes more? I'm not saying it's all about money, but like, do you think he might even have more financial success through his, this, these other businesses than he does through his music? I mean, maybe if if he were to retire, I wouldn't be surprised if that's why. Um, I, it's streaming is just such a different like animal when it comes to like. I think that might be why he's dropping so much music, but he's never he's never he's kind of always been like that since like he blew up with the rise like yeah instantly drops another album right after and does music videos and remixes for all these songs like all in a short period of time but i don't know it's just i think i don't know i, I don't know what it is yeah i'm curious if it if he gets if he's burnt out or if he just wants to move on i don't know but regardless um yeah f- futuristic i mean we talk about him a lot on the show mm-hmm. because one he's one of yours and mine like favorite artists for a while and two you've done all these contests and right stuff. yeah <laughs> so yeah i'm excited for his album yeah uh, we'll have to i mean i feel like it's only right that we eventually w- review that one as well Definitely, yeah <laughs> but yeah what's what else has been going on there's been a lot of stuff that's happened since we last recorded I right think. kanye has been going crazy on twitter <laughs> which is not really new for him but um some people it's are are actually on his side this time it's not just kanye being crazy about politics uh he's talking a lot about uh labels and owning masters and stuff like that and i got some i'm gonna pull my notes real quick yeah pull it up um Um, for the people who don't really know um he i'll just give a little backstory but then you can kind of dive into what it's all about but kanye posted a video where he was peeing (laughs) on his grammy yeah uh it was like literally in his toilet and he was just pissing on it and uh then he i guess that was the start of this deeper conversation yeah so basically he was just talking about how in his opinion like labels have been robbing artists for years and like kanye likes to talk about our society and like in like uh comparison with like slavery a lot over the past years and he was saying how like labels are basically slave owners to artists yeah and um talking about the whole idea of like owning masters and i think he also said that um apparently at one point jay-z sold the rights to kanye's masters to get jay-z's masters i don't know how the ownership works but so so apparently i think jay-z like through all his label stuff had the rights to kanye's like uh masters and gave that up so that he could get his own oh and so then, he sold Kanye's masters behind like his kind of back. Screwed him in over. Like in trade. For I don't his know own. how this works. <laughs> okay, but that's what he tweeted. Okay, but he he was like, not out of like. It's funny because he was like exposing Jay Z, but he was like, it's okay. I always love. I always love my brother, but like, 
it's clearly they're like beefing and that's but just he's Kanye trying to make being it seem like the nice guy about it yeah so but. he's trying to make it seem like it's it's bigger than this beef it's more about like these mm-hmm. labels like stealing from artists right and so like i think he's got a really good message he's trying to say but he's just doing it in a kanye way so it's like s- some people are just they might agree with him but they're just not gonna like support him <laughs> yeah because he's just so extreme right and then but i feel like that's also like that's always been kanye right yeah like, everything he does is like over the top and mm-hmm. and um, then it's usually stuff where a few years later people are like you know he was right but <laughs> yeah <laughs> um anyways he, uh like logic actually responded to one of the tweets um saying like yeah like this happens at def jam all the time and that's i think kanye is, i don't know if he still is but was signed to def jam and like uh basically said that uh they have a they did a remix for perfect on logic's new album Mm. with lil wayne but like def jam is not willing to pay lil wayne and so it's just never going to come out and logic doesn't really care anymore to put out music yeah (laughs) dude but like i'd love to hear that yeah lil wayne on perfect that'd be dope but um well yeah logic also i think this was kind of like this sparked a whole lot of conversation on twitter in the last couple days um but I saw today Logic tweeted that he's apparently for a while he's been trying to get uh, his music to be allowed to be played on Twitch and YouTube without like copyright issues Mm -hmm. and like royalty free and everything because he said like I want to give back to the gaming community. I want you guys to be able to play my music but he said that UMG or Universal won't just won't let him. Oh really? And, And he was basically calling them out and he added them and like thousands of he said and he like added ninja he said i want people like ninja and all these guys to do it but umg won't let me and just so dumb yeah it's just crazy that i don't know we've both said like it's way beyond our uh like skill set on knowing how the legal side of any of this works right but it is just crazy to me that it's artists for for as long as i've listened to music people have had issues with trying to get labels to allow right. them to yeah like use their music in these different ways it's a trend yeah it's like um i don't know it's funny because i'm pretty sure like there's no way logic and def jam like are on good terms now because he was talking about how he was signed on to do like another album after this but he's just like not gonna do it and then in an interview he got asked like oh so like how did you get out of that in the contract and they're like well we we didn't <laughs> I think he's just going to stay in the contract forever. I just not. I don't do know it. how that works, but like, I feel like he would owe them money or he's got a lot like of money him or something. Yeah. He's got a lot of money, but if you like contractually owe them something that'll like add up yeah. and then fall on his kids. But like, I don't know how that works. Yeah, man. <laughs> it's been weird, but I do think that I think it's good that Kanye did this. Cause he has always been the one to kind of start these conversations. Yeah. It feels like, mm-hmm. um, he was calling a lot of people out. He was like, drake kendrick j cole like we need to all get in a room and like talk about this i think that would be really good but i just don't think any of those guys want to associate themselves with kanye right now yeah. but also like pretty much none of them are on twitter so like i don't think yeah, that they ever too. saw it directly um well and then i also saw a clip from i don't know when this was maybe a couple years ago but lecrae like smashing his yeah what, that what was, was it that, that was smashed? just in his music video he oh. just smashed his I think it was like a platinum plaque, but um, yeah. I don't know. He just did that for a music video, oh, okay. and then people were like putting it next to Kanye peeing in his Grammy. Yeah, which but, is kind of different because yeah. if it's like not for a music video, but yeah, yeah, I don't know. I mean, like, what does the Grammy have to do with the conversation that Kanye's having? Because the Grammy, it has nothing won, to do with labels. But yeah, like, like he won for his music, right? You know? But I, the Grammys is a whole other like. I don't know, organization, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. That like people don't like. And I think a lot of that has to do with labels, like stepping in, which is why certain people win certain awards. And so maybe he was kind of indirectly being like, well, the label got me this, but I don't care. Yeah. So like they don't, they don't owe me anything. Yeah. Okay. I wonder if there was an award, a music like award show thing, but that was totally separated from any sort of, big company Mm -hmm. if it was like a fan run thing if it was like i don't know even if it's just online like you can vote through a certain website and it's all like fan organized how much different the results would be for like rap album of the year like pop song of the year like whatever it'd be it'd be pretty crazy because i mean i don't think 
any of the big guys are necessarily like this, but I've just been hearing a lot more stuff about people that have like fake streams and stuff like that. And like fake fan bases. Yeah. But obviously if, if it's pretty easy to figure out, cause you can just look at who actually tours well, cause that means fans are willing to go see them live. You can't yeah. fake that. Like if someone gets like tens of millions of streams and mm-hmm. then no one shows up to their show. Exactly. So that's the one way you can look at it, but I don't know, like, cause I'm always thinking about things in like comparison with like sports and stuff like that. And, um, like a bunch of people were like, oh, LeBron got snubbed for MVP this year because they just gave it to Giannis. Yeah. And then in the comments, everyone's always like, oh, no, but he had better stats, blah, blah, blah. And then it's like the whole argument of like stats over skill or like or impact. Stats versus like championships. Yeah, which and- versus like musicality versus like streams or like yeah, albums it, sold. it's like you know, it's a never ending debate. Like you're, right. it's Im- it's impossible to find the right answer. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, should this guy win because his song was the biggest song of the entire year? Or should this guy win because it, musically it's more difficult and more talented? Right. And, yeah. Know. Speaking of logic, like we kind of mentioned him earlier, but he released his like we I think we might have mentioned it once that he was creating like a beat pack yeah beat on tape. through twitch during his live streams mm-hmm. and he released that now yeah and it's free to anyone right uh-huh it's you have to download it through like a dropbox link which is funny because like that seems like a pretty modern thing in like relative to music but so many people i don't think downloaded it because they just didn't know how what do you mean people don't like know how to all download? the comments like all the top ones were like doesn't download for me doesn't work because they're trying to download like a dropbox on their phone Oh and they're God. like, there's no download. Or I click play and it wouldn't play. Bro, people are stupid, man. I know. <laughs> so did you get it? Yeah, I listened to it. It was like five beats, but I was think he, he made them all like in one Twitch session. Oh, wow. I'm Were they sure. like, are any of them like, oh, damn, like that's a banger. I want to make a song off that. Or I saw, I, I heard them and I'm like, that'd be kind of cool to freestyle on these. Because I know a lot of my like newer gained fans or whatever like listen to logic and i was like that'd be kind of cool to freestyle and then i saw a bunch of artists freestyling on them like a a lot of like underground specific like white rappers doing it and And i was kind of like "Eh." like, it's okay i'll 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 I'll, I'll wait on this one but they were they were cool they were good beats yeah i just think it's cool that he did that yeah so could someone make a song like an actual song not a freestyle but a real song with one of those beats and then like use it themselves and make money from it yeah so pretty much every single beat i think is like pretty sample based and a lot of them beyond that are like sampling tv shows and so that would be like pretty much impossible to clear even for like logic but um uh not only that even if it was like completely original i i don't think it, anyone could use it but you can't like put it on streaming platforms. yeah that was my question like yeah. so no one can really do no, anything with those beats no just social media stuff yeah. and i don't think I don't know what his like intended idea was for that because I'm sure he knew a bunch of people would like rap on him. But yeah, yeah, that's just what's so. I've never understood this aspect of the music community that I think you probably get, but to me, I've never got when people will make a beat or spend the time to write it. Maybe you're a rapper, you don't even make the beats. Spend the time to create this whole like intricate rap over a beat that you can't do any. Yeah, I mean, you can. You can post on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, sure. But, like, you can't really label this as your song. And I, I've never got that. Why would, as an artist, why do you want to spend, like, 12, 12 hours, let's say, through writing it, recording it? Maybe you got it, like, maybe you want it to be really good, so you're going to, like, do all the, like, technical stuff. Yeah. Why do people do that? I don't get it. Like, what? Sure, you can probably get, like, some retweets on Twitter with, like, a good freestyle. And sometimes freestyles can go viral, but oftentimes it's... To me, I've just never got that. It doesn't really make sense anymore today. I think it was... I don't know. It'd be really cool if, like, mixtapes were still around and, like, Spotify and Apple Music were able to, like, create a little, like... I don't know. Like, think about something, like, on the bottom, how there's, like, the four buttons. Like, one of them is for, like, free mixtapes and stuff. Oh. Like, th- that would be really cool. And, like, they don't get paid and they're like it's it's all i don't know free as in the artist isn't getting any streaming revenue but you can still find these yeah and mixes. it would be cool because then if you say 
I don't know, Logic puts out one of his old mixtapes and that's starting to stream really well. He's not going to get any money, but it might move his name up on like yeah. the artist list, which will then get them to listen to his albums. Like that would make a lot of sense, I feel like. Um, and I think there's like a certain art to like rapping over old beats that like there's a reason so many rappers do it. It's because like that song inspired them to like make a new song yeah. over it. And I think I wish that was more of a thing. But I don't I don't like watching I don't like a little freestyles of people when they're like just them rapping over a beat playing like in the video. Like I I like it when it's like a studio made. sounding yeah. song. Like I don't ever even if it's like really well done like those videos, like even if they're like a like Corday put one out and it was cool. But I was like, I don't go back and listen to it all the time. Yeah. Well, so when you were first getting growing up get, first getting into hip-hop where was your go-to place to find the mixtapes was it just soundcloud usually for you so let's see when i was young young i had like an ipod and i didn't know this at the time but some of the stuff on there were mixtapes that my brothers had downloaded oh, okay yeah. so like i was listening to them but not really knowing where they came from and then when i got older i think by the time i was like 11 or 12 um that's when i my bro, brian showed me my oldest brother what dat piff was which was like the mixtape website and um on there like i didn't really know how to use it super well but he just showed me a few artists that i knew that had mixtapes it's funny because lecrae did one with don cannon at the time yeah and so i checked that out and i was like oh this is what a mixtape is yeah and then when i got older soundcloud became big and then that was cool because people would do freestyles on soundcloud all the yeah. time so how does SoundCloud have like the rights to well, the thing put it, up anything on there, whereas Spotify and Apple, you can't? Is it just... I don't really understand it either <laughs> yeah, I mean, because <laughs> I've done a bunch of remixes on SoundCloud and like five of the, let's say, 20 that I've done have gotten like blocked for oh, like the, oh, so some being stuff too does much get of a... Taken down. Yeah. So like, like oh. one time I did, I did one where I, I wanted to do a remix to the verses of a song, but keep the chorus in. And then that, because the chorus was in there, it like recognized it too much through the oh. algorithm and blocked it. But usually when you just rap on another beat, it's fine. But. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. So like our Logic's old mixtapes, those are on SoundCloud though, right? They might not be officially like put up by him on SoundCloud, but, but they're on, they're it. on Datpiff, which is like so where... So people still use Datpiff if they yeah, want to listen to Yeah, it's still mixtapes. like a company. Like okay. and they, people still drop on there, but it's not like, like, I don't know. It's... Uh, no, no big artists are like exclusively dropping on dat piff yeah but it's not that hard if you if you especially if you use apple music which i know i think you can do it through spotify too but you just literally hop on the website on your computer click download put it into your library and it'll automatically add it into your phone yeah, yeah. which people don't want to go through that effort but yeah <laughs> But it's so easy. No, yeah, but like people, I just think it's funny because people will be like, oh, this mixtape needs to get on Spotify like as soon as possible. And then years later, they'll actually do it, but there'll be like two or three songs that didn't make it because it couldn't get the sample cleared. Yeah. And then like, it's not that hard to download it. Yeah. Put it in your <laughs> Spotify library. <laughs> I don't know if you can do it on Spotify. Though. Oh, really? Maybe you can. I don't know. Okay. I'm um, not sure. Well, yeah, I mean, that's like chances. Um acid rap yeah that on. one the one big so what yeah was like it? the Juice? best song yeah it didn't it <laughs> didn't, didn't make it cleared. on yeah i know i was so bummed i was like listening through it and then all of a sudden it's just like it's just chance's voice and he's, he's like, like hello he's, all the streams go towards this foundation i'm like sorry but like i don't think a lot of people are gonna listen to this over and over again yeah i mean it's a good project but yeah without the banger song it's like i don't know yeah um <laughs> should we hop into the the album review i'm down so if you guys are new around here or you know don't really know how this works uh every other week we review a uh, throwback album it could be anything it could come out it have could have came out last year or back in like the 80s or whatever so last week uh or two weeks ago matt chose midnight marauders mm -hmm. by a tribe called quest yeah which i knew not one single thing <laughs> about going into it um but over the last couple of weeks we've been listening to it and we're going to talk about it a little bit. Yeah, I'll give a little bit of a backstory to the album. Not too much. I definitely don't even know that much about <laughs> it. But um, so their, their big album was in 91, which was uh, the low end theory. Um, and then this came out in 93. So this is kind of coming off of the like success of that. Yeah. And um, with Midnight Marauders, it's, it's a little bit of a it's always interesting for me to listen to an album that's like after someone's biggest project yeah. because 
sometimes like people don't like it at all like with j cole not a lot of people liked for your eyes only they yeah. kind of saw it as like a, a fall off but i loved it did you like i like for that album only? yeah it's like it. it's definitely different and um but i don't know some people like the i know that love j cole are like i hate that album like fold and close is the worst song ever i'm like what? are you serious <laughs> yeah man i i also think with music a lot of if you like an album or a or a song is like where you're at in your stage of life. Yes. hundred percent. Like if you're in a certain mindset in your life, when this comes out and you connect with it, then you're going to like it. And I think that's why I really like, uh, for your eyes only is cause that was the year I started to make music. And I was like, then that came out and I'm like, Oh, this is, this is the best album ever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Um, Anyways. Um, what were your f- first thoughts on the album? Wait, wait, so wait, before we go back. Oh, so yeah. did this, so this was coming off of like their biggest album yeah. and a huge success. Do you know historically did people enjoy this this follow-up album or did they think it was a letdown? I think so. I don't I don't think it was like uh I think I don't think it was as huge. Yeah, but um I'm pretty sure it's But it's a well respected. It's considered like a lot of people consider it like a classic hip hop album, okay. but yeah. Yeah, so you know more about it than I do, so I'll go first, I guess, and then mm-hmm. you can kind of follow up, but the the biggest thing right off the bat that stood out to me is I really felt like I was just listening to Logic, yeah. But in like <laughs> a different generation, mm-hmm. it's cr- it blew my mind how strong the influence was of Logic, right? And like, that's the reason I chose this album over like the Low End Theory, would, that being their like most well known album, is because Midnight Marauders is. First off, just in like he has a song called Midnight Marauders, which is like his take on like all the a lot of the skits with the girl talking that are in that song. And I'm sure that was going to go into whatever you're about to say. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's just one of the the th- parallels yeah. I've seen. But so if you guys don't really know, Logic has kind of in most his projects, he has this this theme of this girl that kind of is like the narrator. Yeah. Right? Thalia. Oh, that's her name. Yeah. Oh, shit. I didn't even know that. So it, when did he do you know when logic started the Thalia so, thing on his 2013 mixtape uh the one right before his album he draw or there's a song called midnight marauders okay and it had like some of the like the direct skits of the girl talking on the midnight marauders album like he just took those and put it on his song okay and then uh that inspired the idea for on the album to have the character he created thalia which is just like an like an actual recording he did like with a girl that, of her like explaining all these facts about his project and that's on that album it's on the incredible true story it's and it's on his current or his his last album he did but um oh so it, so it, well, it's not on everyone it's not no, on like uh the one that it's he on did. at least three of them okay yeah what was the one with the or actually one eight one one eight hundred one what was that album called that was everybody but um yeah, it, I, it is on that one because oh, there's really? uh the skit at the very very end oh okay and then that same skit is also on young sinatra Four. i know too much about logic <laughs> but um I, I think it's cool when artists have a thing that transcends all of their albums and right. connects them together yeah i think that's really cool but i just think with logic it's funny because a lot of people have said logic is the hip-hop artist for people that aren't that into hip-hop and i don't think that's necessarily true but i'm sure there's a lot of logic fans that know thalia and like don't know that that comes from midnight marauders yeah well that's i didn't know that yeah and so like it makes sense i didn't why know that's, that at first either yeah. yeah like i never it actually blew my mind like i'll be honest i was like oh my god like Matt chose this because he wanted me to realize right, that, yeah. <laughs> that all of this goes back to a tribe called quest yeah and it was cool because Yeah, so Logic, it's just this girl and she'll kind of, like, what's her purpose? She kind of is like a narrator who will give backstory on, like, parts of the album and, like, Mm -hmm. just kind of, like, little intermissions, sort of, or, like, intros or Yeah, it's kind of, like, fun facts. It's not really, like, anything crazy deep, like, story-wise, but... But it's, it almost feels like a like a robot creep. It's kind of creepy, but also like a peaceful voice. Right. And at the time, like that would be so, I feel like strange. Like that, I don't, because I don't think anything like that's been done before on like an album. So like, I don't know, imagine being someone in like 1993 93. listening to an album and then they're just like, gets interrupted by someone explaining it. You'd be kind of yeah. confused. Yeah. So that must've been cool. Um, but so that's the first thing yeah. that I noticed. Um, it literally sounds almost the well, exact yeah. same. Not only is like that a parallel with logic, but like 
a lot of the lines on like that album i don't remember there was one song in particular that logic has like quoted is like is like a throwback to the album like like 10 different times yeah and then the next thing that like also blew my mind was the song electric relaxation i was hoping you would notice that um too. what's i so i listening to it and i was like oh my like, like halfway I through know I'm, this. Like, I'm like oh my god i know this what is this from and mm-hmm. then i realized I'm 99% sure it's a Logic song, but I couldn't remember what song it was. Well, so... Is it not? There's two connections. Logic, on one of his mixtapes, rapped on the same beat, and, and he called it, re- like, just relaxation. Okay. And, like, he uses a lot of the same lines. It's like a storytelling song that's, like, the same exact topic as the real song. Um, but I don't think that's what I know it th- from, though. I don't think so either, but... um. So the uh, the beginning, uh, like the little intro on the song, it's a little bit of a different sample. And so J. Cole used that same sample on Forbidden Fruit from oh, Born that's Center. That's why I know and it. And <laughs> then not only did he sample it there, he technically resampled his own song, but it was oh. that original sample and put it in reverse, which is Neighbors. Oh, I remember hearing about that. Yeah. So, a lot of people know that Forbidden Fruit reverses Neighbors, but they don't know that Forbidden Fruit is... Uh, oh, I had the song written down. It's a, a soul song from the from the seventies. Wait, wait, wait! I thought you just said it's from this one. Wait, the so relaxation one? No, but electric relaxation sampled uh, Ronnie Foster "Mystic Brew" in ni- from nineteen seventy two. Who's it by? Uh, Ronnie Foster. Oh, Ronnie. Yeah, yeah, that's the name. Ronnie and then Foster. "Mystic Brew," I think, is the name is the of the song. song. But uh, and then they so they sampled that on electric relaxation. And then J. Cole sampled that. Oh, it's a whole chain, but yeah. Bro, that is crazy that like, I mean, you've, you've always told me this, but it's crazy when you exper- when you actually learn it for yourself. Yeah. That just how many, like, it really shows that the newer music is just inspired by older music. Mm-hmm. And it's like Midnight Marauders were inspired by that song that came out when? The 80s, you said? Yeah, or 72. Yeah, yeah, then J. Cole sampled it and then again a couple years later sampled it again Mm -hmm. it's crazy and then there'll probably be a day when someone samples j cole's song and people think like oh my god he sampled j cole but in reality they sample yeah it's it just goes way back exactly so those are the only like parallels i caught but i only listened to it like two times through it's funny yeah if if we had listened to we could have listened to low end theory and you probably would have noticed the same stuff i don't think there's the like thalia type voice on that one but um uh what was i gonna say like can I kick it? Their like most famous song is on that one, and that uh, uh, is uh, what was I gonna say? Logic has a song. Can I kick yeah. it? Like he has a very big like a tribe called Quest. Well, and then in Logic's newest album, he has Thalia say there's a certain line where she says like Logic credited so and so, and she lists off like um. I don't know, five or six artists who are like inspired Logic to make this album. And yeah. doesn't she say, I'm pretty sure she list off, Quest. she says like Kanye West, yeah. a Tribe Called Quest, mm-hmm. and like a few other people as key inspirations to this project or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so then when I went back and listened to this, it all made sense. But it, it really is crazy. I feel like half this episode, we've been talking about Logic, which isn't really intentional, but it is just crazy to me that how strong the connection is like i really felt like i was listening to logic in like a different generation yeah. that's cool though because it's like you'll hear it and you'll be like oh i've heard that line before what is that you're like oh logic said it on this song or i've heard this sample um and it's not just with like a tribe called quest he does it with like Nas a lot and other artists yeah. but mainly tribe called quest <laughs> and it is just it's cool because it gives you a little insight into what shaped this artist into who they are today Mm -hmm. and i think like for someone like us if we were to try to get into like 90s rap i think the way to do it would be like get into a tribal quest get into nas and then branch out from there because that's close to what we're familiar with Mm -hmm. and then you can slowly like broaden your music taste yeah yeah for sure so that that was my takeaways from it what Mm -hmm. for you what did you i had heard like three or four of the songs like going into it so, oh, so you had never actually listened all the way through. not no not all the way through okay. but um uh i don't know it, it's just i get like uh, certain stuff in the production it's just like i i love how it's like jazz influenced like the samples but um i don't know every time i listen i just hear j cole and logic the whole time when i'm listening to it but that's kind of it really i mean we kind of touched on like the same stuff i was thinking yeah um oh how do you think it holds up though today 
Like, oh, I I, I, was, did you enjoy listening? Yeah, to it? I thought it was phenomenal. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've said before, but I have trouble getting invested into like older school hip hop mm-hmm. and like just boom bap hip hop, I guess. But for me, I really liked. It. I, I feel like if I go into listening to music with like an intention, mm-hmm. kind of like I'm doing this for the podcast, I'm gonna like. I'm not just listening to it just cause because for me, if I'm gonna listen to music just just because I'm chilling and or driving and want to listen you're to something, you're gonna put on something you want to. Yeah, like I'm gonna you know I'm gonna put on something to. that I know I'll like. Yeah. Whereas I I like the segment because it forces me to listen to new stuff, and as a result, I've liked all the projects so far. Yeah, so. yeah, I feel the same way. Do you have any desire to make beats like that? I for mean, yourself? yeah, it's just nowadays it's so different because it's like. One of my favorite things with like listening to music is like right before I came over here, I was just on the website who sampled, which is like you can click any song ever. So like I went on electric relaxation, found the sample, click on that. And then you'll see under it songs that have also sampled it. And that's where you'll see like J Cole. It's like a really well done website, but that's um, awesome. So like, I like doing stuff like that. Um, and like noticing songs that have the same sample, but nowadays it happens a lot still, but you'll look it up and it won't come up because it'll be like somebody's sample they made, like some producer that makes samples and sends them out. And mm-hmm. like a lot of times they'll use the same song. And then like, it's if you don't understand that that's like a thing going on with production, you can get, it can be really confusing for the fans. Like I remember Logic when he did 44 more, everyone's like, oh, six, his producer just copied uh, this beat from future but it was no it was ill mine made a bunch of samples sent them out to all these producers oh, they just happened to use the same sample the same and they and both they got both cleared have, so oh, okay. yeah yeah so I, it, I don't know it must be weird as a producer nowadays because it's like like back then well i guess even like you said they sampled the guy from the 80s mm-hmm. but at some point someone had to create it originally Originally. right and and does that just not i feel like that just doesn't really happen in hip-hop that much anymore so what i was saying kind of sounded like a negative towards people that like make samples it wasn't it's like um someone like mario mario luciano what he does is he makes completely original samples and it's meant to sound like a soul sample from like 70s or 80s or whatever but um so that new producers can can sample it and get it cleared and get that and it's not it's not like you're guaranteed like anyone can use it and get it cleared like he's really strict with like not strict but like he'll clear it if he wants to or he'll clear it if it it makes sense and uh i think that's a good direction for music because it's original and it's still sampling so it's like the art of both of them yeah but at the same time it's complicated (laughs) do you have the skill set to like make your own samples like like what not, mario does definitely are you not, not you like know. in that way like i mean there's people that make trap samples where they'll literally just like play some notes in the keys and then they're they're good at programming sounds and like almost like a sound engineer where they're just they're just uh like creating all these plugins and creating all these different presets on like omnisphere which is like a, a just a plugin you use on yeah. your computer but um So that's like one way of sample making, but like I'm referring to like what Mario Luciano does or like Frank Dukes, uh, which is more soul. Like, like it sounds like a band or it sounds like, like I don't, I'm not, are they actually performing it themselves or, uh, some of it? Yes. But most of it's like, he'll bring in someone to sing. He'll bring in someone to play this, someone to do that. But he's like, he's producing and like directing it. If that makes sense. Yeah. So that's always, that's, that's so interesting to me. I never, I don't know. I guess I, I've never known what percentage of artists when they drop a project, like how much of that did they actually make from the ground up yeah. when they brought in a band, they brought in mm-hmm. like different musicians. And then, cause so I, that's like, that's what creating your own sample is, is you're directing it from yeah. nothing. I mean, it could be you also like playing all of it, but like, Mario Luciano will make these samples and it could literally be someone else playing the guitar, someone else playing the drums, someone else doing this and he's putting it all together. And it's still his thing. Yeah. And I mean like he's paying those people. Yeah, it's not yeah, like they're yeah. going like uncredited, but um, like Kenny beats, I've been watching all his videos has been talking about it a lot. He gets samples from Mario Luciano, but he's more of a more known for being a producer that will use someone else's sample and then it'll be co-production but he does also make a lot of original stuff like he plays guitar and or he'll play keys but um that's more of like what i kind of do as a producer yeah and but do you have any desire to like 
are you intrigued by that side of yeah. creating your own samples and you have a friend who can like play this instrument and bringing so, them in. And yeah. That's like, I think that's super dope. Um, I don't think I ever see myself to the level of like how well done, like Mario Luciano and Frank Dukes do it where, cause that's like his whole thing is like, like that's like his main focus is yeah. like, he's constantly upgrading his studio and bringing in new people to record samples. But, um, like I don't see myself necessarily going that route, but yeah, like, this week actually i have a session with chase from not alone that we just had on our podcast but um we're gonna like make some beats i'm gonna bring him in he plays guitar and he, he plays pretty much every instrument but um yeah. i don't know it's fun for me because like i can just tell him what to do and he'll do it and then i can <laughs> now i know enough on like how i make my beats for like oh i need okay first we need a main line now i need something to fill up the high end a little bit yeah and like that kind of collaboration I think is really fun. Yeah. And then you don't have to rely on trying to like learn everything right. yourself or something. And then it's original and then it's like, all right, if we end up dropping this song, we'll just do like a 50, 50 split and then don't have to worry about anything. And then plus you usually just like the song more because you did it and you were involved yeah. in it. I don't think a lot of people are like, I only listen to artists that like, like, cause no one really cares about, if an artist produced it, they kind of just care about how the sound. Yeah. 99 point nine percent of people don't even know what yeah. goes into behind yeah. the scenes. 99 percent of people don't care that russ produced engineer did all that like you yeah, might that know doesn't about matter it. but i do think it's you can almost notice when an artist is or is not involved somewhat in the production doesn't mean they're playing anything like i don't think kendrick plays any instruments but you can tell that like his production is like very purposeful he in was in ways? the studio how, how can you tell just like well just compared to an artist that isn't like that like most big rappers are very involved, involved in their production yeah. but some guys uh their music is more just like oh here's a, a bunch of beats pick one and go rap on it and then that's that's literally all they'll do they'll rap and they just kind of say yeah you can do the rest like there was a story about how kendrick was like they would bring sleeping bags into their studio when he was working on damn and just like didn't leave the studio building for like 18 days <laughs> oh something crazy gosh. yeah bro that's dedication yeah <laughs> that's so cool i never knew the process of creating samples like i I, I understand what samples are, but I never knew, like, do people still make original samples? And right. Stuff? But I, it makes sense now because when you watch John Bellion's documentaries, mm -hmm. that he every time he, John Bellion releases a new album, he'll release a documentary along with it that shows the whole process. And he, it seems like the, him and his producers do a whole lot of that. Where yeah. They, they'll bring in a talented group of, like, people playing obscure instruments right and, and like, it's like compared to the older videos of him where it's like just a video and the whole thing is him playing stuff on here you can see the progression like they're both equally as original but one of them is his idea collaborate collaborating with someone else's idea so they bring in someone to go play strings and it's just like a way more well-produced version of that yeah like some people will look at that and be like well it, why is it this artist song and there was a hundred people involved in the making of the album, but I don't know. That's like just they're still getting paid. Right. Like yeah. you said. I mean, sometimes they're not and that's a problem, <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. We got to have one of these days. We got to somehow get Mario Luciano to come on the show. Bro. Yes. I would <laughs> learn. So, I would just, the whole episode, I just sit there in awe, just learning so much. Yeah. He's got his podcast now too, which uh, I haven't checked out yet, but I'm going to because yeah. I'm going to learn a lot. <laughs> <laughs> we got to hit him up because he's from Seattle, right? Right. Yeah. I think he's somewhere up North. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's kind of all we really have for this episode. So before we wrap it up, guys, something we like to do every time we get the chance to just give a little spotlight to some, you know, maybe lesser known artists who have dropped something recently. So Matt, who's your underground drop for this week? So this week, uh, two of my favorite underground artists dropped a song together, which was pretty dope. But um, Vic Sage dropped a song called Go Up featuring John Gibbs. I've known about uh, Vic Sage for a few years now. I've been following him. He's super dope. He's been dropping a lot of music. Yeah. Uh, John Gives, I've known about since like 2013, I remember 14. you. Yeah, no, I remember you. I know that name because of you from years right. ago. Yeah, like back in like high school, like I remember Alec would listen to him. But anyways, um, 
uh, they did a song together. Um, it's really dope. Uh, yeah, it's Matt kind and of I a cool. Both listened to it before we started recording. It's a banger. Yeah, and it's it's got a cool vibe with like uh, John Gibbs singing and uh, but yeah, I definitely check it out. It's a dope song. Yeah. So there you go, guys. Uh, definitely, you know, if we recommend something, if you listen to the show enough, y- you kind of know what we're into. So if we recommend it, you can hopefully know that like it's not trash. Right. <laughs> um, so go go give these people a shot and help them get some more streams and stuff like that. Uh, but with that being said, there's new episodes every single Monday. Um, if you guys are new around here, you should leave a review of our show on the Apple yes, Podcast app. Search Not a Sheep. Even if you're on Spotify or YouTube or something, you should just go search Not a Sheep, rate us five stars, and write a review. Yes. Uh, we also have full video versions of every single episode available on YouTube. So if you guys want that, go check it out. Um, but yeah, Matt, where can they find all your stuff? So you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at the Matt Mog. And if you just look up Matt Mog on any streaming service, you can find my music. Yep. Do you have anything coming out or are you, are you waiting? Are you plotting? I'm plotting right now, but dude, I got like three, two songs that are done and like three song ideas that I think are, are going to be big. Okay. There you go, guys. Be on the lookout. Uh, you can follow me at Hey Narwhal on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. You can also check out our other podcast called Peak to Middle School with me and my buddy Kyle. Uh, it's the second podcast in the Farrar Productions family. So you guys should check that out if you want a comedy show. But with that being said, we'll see you guys next time.